Well, you can uh, remain standing in honor of God's word as we have our scripture reading from Romans 8, 26 to 34. And uh, since we are not singing, if you would like to, you may remove your mask. Romans 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew. <laughs> Who's that? That's all of us, right? Whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Amen. May the Lord be blessed by the reading and hearing of his word. Please be seated. Our sermon title today is Jesus Christ, Our Intercessor. And today we are going to do something different, and we're going to do it differently than we've done it before. So we're doing something different in a different way. So just, uh, whew, we're going to be different. Okay, uh, we're going to talk about Jesus Christ, Our Intercessor, and what we're going to do, as we have done about once a year, is we are then going to have a time of prayer. Um, does anyone else feel like we need prayer in our country? Maybe in our world, maybe in our own small communities. And so we're going to do that. Uh, what I want to remind you of is we do have three questions at the end of your handouts after the conclusion. And uh, we want you to be thinking of those as we go through the service. And then we have a place for a commitment. So with that, how did we do on our commitment last week? All right, I got mine. Now, uh, we had my commitment last week was to spend time reading scripture with our kids. And uh, I, can't, I have to confess that it was kind of easy because they were doing a, a thing with a camp and we had to do it every night. So that worked out uh, well for my advantage, but um, we want to just invite you all to be making those commitments. And again, the point is that we as brothers and sisters in Christ are not just supposed to get together and have us a great time and then go home and forget what we learned. We're to take what we learned, apply it to our lives, and be changed. And so we want to invite you to think of those, on those questions, to make a commitment, and then to share it with someone who is going to hold you accountable to that. All right. Uh, okay. So what we're going to do is um, have a time of prayer, and I'm going to take a uh, I'm going to take this microphone, I'm going to put on my mask and my gloves, I'm going to sanitize the microphone, and then anyone who wants to pray or uh, uh, about the different topics that we're going to look at can do that. I'll sanitize it in between each person so that we can be safe, but we want to spend time uh, in prayer this morning. And so as we think about prayer, let's pray. Father, it is our privilege to gather together. We are told in your word that we are all members of the body of Christ. And as the body of Christ, we all have different roles and functions. And yet there are commands that are given to us that are universal for the entire body of Christ. And one of those is to pray always with all prayer and supplication for all the saints. And we want to do that this morning. But we recognize that in our current cultural climate, we have to do this a little differently. And so we pray for grace and strength for each one. Father, we want to glorify you. And so I pray, Lord, that as we do this, you would be with my words and speech, that I would clearly, accurately, and boldly communicate the truth of your word. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. One of my favorite stories about prayer 
comes, unsurprisingly, from the life of George Mueller. George Mueller was a Christian missionary. He lived from 1805 to 1898. He was an evangelist, a coordinator of orphanages in Bristol, England. And through his faith and prayers, and without ever asking for money, he had the privilege of caring for over 120,000 orphan children. He also traveled over 200,000 miles by ship to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in 42 countries and to challenge believers about world missions and trusting God. And in his journal, he records miracle after miracle of God's provision and answered prayer. So I want to share just one of those with you this morning. One morning, all the plates, cups, and bowls on the table were empty. There was no food in the larder and no money to buy food. The children were standing, waiting for their morning mule, uh, meal, when Mueller said, Children, you know we must be in time uh, in, for school. Then lifting up his hands, he prayed, Dear Father, we thank thee for what thou art going to give us to eat. Right then there was a knock at the door. The baker stood there and he said, Mr. Mueller, I couldn't sleep last night. Somehow I felt you didn't have bread for breakfast and the Lord wanted me to send you some. So I got up at 2 a.m. and baked some fresh bread and have brought it. Mr. Mueller thanked the baker and no sooner had he left when there was a second knock on the door. It was the milkman. He announced that his milk cart had broken down right in front of the orphanage and he would like to give the children his fresh milk so he could empty his wagon and repair it. What does this tell us? It tells us that prayer is powerful. Prayer is powerful. Throughout scripture, there is an assumption that God's people will pray. A child of God has a desire to communicate with the Father. Our scripture reading this morning was in Romans 8, 26 to 34. And so this passage of scripture provides instruction and comfort. And so I want to look at it again just briefly and make a few comments on some of these verses in Romans chapter 8. Now this is a rather famous uh, chapter of scripture. There's so many wonderful things in here, uh, and we don't have time to look at them all, but I want to mention just a few things. Verse 26 of Romans 8 says this, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Has anyone else fa ever faced a situation where you thought to yourself, I don't even know how to pray? Anybody? Okay, good. You know what's awesome? The Holy Spirit takes the groaning of our heart and he turns it into prayer for us. He knows what's going on inside of us. And he takes that and he turns it into prayer. But then verse 27 now, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Who searches our hearts? Christ. Christ takes the prayers that the Holy Spirit translates. So we, we have a situation in our lives, and we're just groaning. We can't even say words. We just say, God, uh, and the Holy Spirit takes our groaning, and he turns it into a prayer. Christ, who knows the mind of the Spirit, then takes that and he intercedes before the throne. Then, look at verse 28. Now, this is a famous verse, but I love it in context. Verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. So, why does everything work out for good? Because God the Holy Spirit and God the Son are interceding for the believer before the throne of grace. Now look at verses 29 and 30. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. Whom he justified, these he also glorified. You are foreknown, predestined, called, justified, and glorified. Verses 31 to 33 what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. I love this. God is for us. We talked about this verse with the kids last night. We said, if God is for us, who can be against us? And they said, well, no one. Yeah, that's the point, right? He freely gave us his son. He will provide for us. No charge can be brought against us. Why? Because God has declared us righteous on the basis of Christ's sacrifice and our faith in him. Look at verse 34. 
Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. I love this. We're never going to be condemned. Why? Because the judge is also our defense attorney. You want to talk about a stacked deck? When the judge is sitting up there and he says, all right, I'm about to pass sentence, and then he gets down and he walks in front of the bench and he defends the person, you got a stacked deck, amen? I am thankful for the stacking of the deck in our favor. He intercedes for us. What does all of this mean? When charges are brought against us, God the Father declares us righteous. When our sin ought to condemn us, Jesus Christ intercedes for us. When we don't know how to pray, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. And when we pray... God the Holy Spirit brings our request to God the Son who then brings it before the Father. When you pray, every person of the Godhead is involved in that prayer every single time. Prayer is powerful. (laughs) And that's why we're commanded to pray always for all things. And so we're going to spend time in prayer this morning. And what we're going to do is I'm going to present a topic And I'm going to explain it a little bit, and then we will pray about it. And for those online, if you want to type a prayer into the comments, or if you want to um, uh, just uh, ask, make a prayer request or a praise, I have this up here so that I can read that. Uh, So if you're joining us online, uh, you can type, you can participate as well. Okay. so I'm, and I said, as I said, I'm going to take a sanitized microphone. I'm going to wear masks and gloves. We're going to do this as, as safely as we can. But I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear you pray. Okay? Um, nothing blesses my heart more, honestly, than hearing the people of God pray. And so I'll just have you raise your hand, and I'll, I'll bring that to you. And if you have prayer requests or praises, we're going to have a specific time for that at the end uh, that you can, and can share those. And so our first topic, thing we want to pray for, is for the world's political climate. Does that need prayer? (laughs) Yes. So I want to look at some verses first. This is what they say. 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4. Therefore, I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So, we're to pray for all men. We're to pray for kings and for all who are in authority. And so I want to mention just a few situations that are going on in our world that we can be in prayer about. One of those is Hong Kong. Freedoms are being restricted in Hong Kong. But what I want to do with each of these is I want to tell you a reason why we can still praise God. Because I personally know someone who I went to high school with who is in Hong Kong preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ right now. He lives there. He moved there. So even though there's dark things happening politically, we can praise God that there are faithful believers there. I want to mention Russia. Russia, the leadership structure is crumbling, for lack of a better word. Spiritually dark, it's only about 2% of the population that attends church. Any, any church. Okay? Yet this past week, I had the privilege of hearing from a brother named Eugene who works there. He was standing with the Kremlin behind him as he shared with us what God is doing in the church that he pastors. He said, right over there is Red Square. Right over there is my apartment. That here is our church. He's standing there. Every two years, his church has doubled in size, and they've had to find a new place to meet. See, even in a, in a, a politically dark place, God is at work. North Korea. Scary things are happening here, right? But I read an article two weeks ago that just it made me laugh, but it's awesome at the same time. So there happens to be, and I say happens to be, a wind that blows from South Korea up to North Korea. And so what the South Korean believers are doing is they are tying gospel tracks to balloons and floating them into North Korea because they can't stop the wind. (laughs) So, beloved, here's the point. We look at the politics of our world and we go, oh, God's still on the throne? He's still reaching people in all of these places. And so that brings us to our own country, America. We're struggling politically. We have this virus. We have racism. We have a uh, contentious presidential election. All this stuff going on. 
We need prayer. But according to what we saw in 1 Timothy, what are we praying for? We're praying for the salvation of people. We're praying for the salvation of our leaders. And, and folks, that includes our governor. <laughs> because think about this with me. How incredible would it be if our governor came to Christ and experienced the glorious transformation of the gospel? Would that not speak volumes for Christ? And so pray for him, folks. Pray for him. And then always there's everything happening in Israel. That's, that's ongoing. <laughs> uh, I didn't include that in here, but uh, you can be praying for that. So what we're going to do is I uh, just have a couple people who are willing uh, and want to pray, and I'll bring you a microphone. Let me, let me get ready. Okay. One. These are harder to put on than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got it. My bride's asking me if I need help. She knows me too well. Yeah. Do you need help putting your gloves on? Yeah. All right, here we go. Yes. Yes, but um, spiritual doctor. All right, who would like to pray or for uh, the political situation in our world? Bill? All right. Go ahead. I think it's on. Is it on? No. Try again. Daryl? Okay. Hello. <laughs> all right, let me do that. There we go. Hey, all right. Let's bow in prayer. Father, we thank you for the fact that, first of all, you are the sovereign God. Amen. That everything that happens in this world is under your control. Mm. And even though the adversary thinks that he's in charge, he ultimately has already been defeated, and that judgment will be carried out. So we thank you for that. We pray for our leaders both in this country and throughout the world. We ask that you will use those who believe in your word as a continuing influence and as the scripture says, who will hinder the onslaught of the evil one. Mm. We pray that even as you prophesy yourself, Lord Jesus, we have seen what we believe are signs for your coming as the king. And prior to that, you have promised to take us to be home with you. And so as we see those signs, we begin to anticipate your coming. And yet we also realize that throughout history, people have anticipated that, and it has not yet happened because of your grace. Mm -hmm. And so we pray that your grace will continue for us that you will lay upon our hearts the witness to Russia, to various parts of the earth where your word is going forth. Mm -hmm. We know of missionaries in Eastern Europe and where uh, allegedly uh, they are closed to the gospel. Mm -hmm. And yet you have used uh, nations from other parts of the world to be witnesses to them where they will not accept people from the United States. Yes. And we, we thank you for that, Father, that you have placed before us, as you say in Revelation, the open door, and no man can shut it. Mm. So we pray that you will enable us to be confident in your word. Mm -hmm. And most of all, Father, we are in the midst of this pandemic there is a great deal of fear being promulgated, and we realize that your word in the book of Job says that you have the number of our days. Mm -hmm. We pray that you will help us to have confidence and faith in you, to use good sense, to, as the pastor has said, follow the instructions that adhere to your word, mm -hmm. but not be afraid to stand for you 
-hmm. and for what you've set us here to do. Mm -hmm. And so we pray that you will enable us to fellowship together, to enjoy one another's company and one another's witness, to pray for one another, and that you will make us effective in the days that you have us here. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Someone else? Pray for the political climate in our world. All right, Everett. Everybody? Just start talking and Daryl will turn up. Or here, hold on, let me check, make sure here. Oh, there we go, there we go. I'd like to pray for Governor Newsom that he would, that he would believe in God and that the, and that everybody who doesn't believe in you shall, shall, and that And that my dad would also believe in you. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Everett. Awesome. All right. Anyone else? Okay. Dear Lord, we just ask that you remind us how powerful you are mm. and that you listen to us when we pray. We just ask that you will remind us how much you love us as the human race, that you mm. created all of us, even the ones that we don't like. And just that you put on our hearts that you have the power to save and only you do and that you have commanded us to pray for the salvation of others. Mm and that you just fortify our spirits so that we're not downtrodden or discouraged by anything that happens, Lord. We know that you're in control and that you hear us and you value our prayers, Lord. And we just thank you for your, your grace and your wonderful, wonderful love that you've given us. Mm. Okay, okay. Second topic we want to mention is to pray for the world's moral climate. You might have noticed that the morality of our world is headed in the wrong direction. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. Now we are preaching through 1 Corinthians and we'll probably get to chapter 6 in like 10 years. No, um, just kidding. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, beginning in verse 9. Do you not know? That the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed. But you were sanctified. But you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. The world around us is full of what Paul has just described. Okay? However, he gives us hope. Where is the hope? Because some of us, as believers in Jesus Christ, used to be that way too. But what happened? We met Jesus. I love this. When you meet Jesus, you are washed. You are sanctified. You are justified. And beloved, that is what our world needs. Our world needs to be washed, sanctified, justified through the gospel of Jesus Christ, and the evidence of that need is all around us. But Paul says in Romans 10, how shall they hear without a preacher? That's you and I. And I look around us and I see evidence of this need. Just a few to, to mention, Ireland's abortion law changed. For years, Ireland had very restrictive abortion, and they changed that this last year. It went into effect in March, and now... Uh, but, but again, I want to give you the, the positive side, right? I have family members there who are shining the light of Christ there and, and extended family there now who are shining the light of Christ. And so even in the midst of darkness, 
there is light. This week I learned that Britain has a pending divorce law change. They are changing to have a no-fault divorce, which they had not had previously. And they are making that change soon. And yet, I know a missionary couple who as soon as all this COVID stuff is over, they're headed over there. I know others who are there serving Christ. And then a little closer to home, we have the Supreme Court decisions uh, here in the USA. There have been several decisions made in recent weeks that we're not thrilled with. (laughs) But here's what I want to remind you of. Our hope is not in people wearing robes. Our hope is in the one who mockingly wore a purple robe 2,000 years ago. That's where our hope is. Our hope is in Jesus. And we have hope in Christ because he is in the business of transformation. Amen? Some of us were once fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, and all the rest. But we were washed, we were sanctified, we were justified in Jesus Christ. And so we want to spend some time in prayer. Our prayer uh, is for those around the world to know this same transformation. And so, uh, oh wait, let me check these real fast here on this. How can I do that? There we go. All right, we have people saying hello. So hello from Alana Rose, from Ron and Barb Stanton, Kevin Campbell, and from Louis Artiz. And he says, I'm always in prayer for all bodies in prayer that God keeps his hands over the COVID that has been getting me down. So pray for them. It's a great time to pray uh, for our country and abroad. So amen. All right, uh, let me get my sanitary wipes. All right. Who would like to pray for the moral condition in our world? I'm sure we all want to, but who would like to hear? Anyone? What? Oh. Sorry, trying to manage the kids and do this at the same time. <laughs> Dear Lord, I thank you, first off, that we can come together. I just praise you, and I thank you for that. Um, mm. And I thank you for the exciting news we heard around the world that your word is still going out in your truth. Um, and then I do want to pray more specifically for the moral climate that can be very discouraging, Lord, and it can be frustrating, Um but I thank you that you are still working, you Mm -hmm. are still in control, Mm -hmm. you are still on the throne, even though sometimes we look around and we doubt that. Thank you for knowing that you are in control. Um, I do pray for Ireland and this law that was passed. I pray for the believers there to be faithful in sharing Christ and sharing the truth. Um, I pray for this divorce law in Britain um, and specifically again just for the believers for their interactions that they are having that they would be able to spread your love and your truth with those Mm. who they are around amen others (laughs) hi Ricky Father God I just wanted to ask that you would um Help us as uh, believers, as Christians, that you would help us to believe you, believe what your word says, and Mm. actually do what you tell us, because I know that the only way that the world is going to change is is through seeing the church, you know, and and Christians um, actually live out uh, what you tell us, and your moral law that you tell us, Mm. and but also being honest about sin when we do sin and, you know, um, not keeping it secret or covering it up or being, you know, um, uh, not even staying in shame or, you know, uh, about it, but just confessing it, confessing it and asking for forgiveness. Mm. And I just ask that you would help us as parents and grandparents to... um, 
you know, teach our children and be honest about our mistakes and, mm. and as the church just be, um, not keep things in the dark, but, you know, um, bring them into your light where there's forgiveness and um, restoration. And um, so I just ask that you would help us just really change our hearts to believe what you say. Mm. I, um, I know we hear it over and over sometimes, but we don't actually, if we believed it, we would change and we, mm. our lives would, would bear that out. So yes. I just ask that you would convict us and help us to change. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. The final section that we have is we want to pray for the world's spiritual climate. Pray for the world's spiritual climate. Now I want to recognize that this section is what is going to make a difference in the other two, right? Spiritual is what's going to make the difference in the political and the moral. And so we pray for the political, we pray for the moral, but the difference is going to be made when people trust Christ as their Savior. That's when hearts and minds and lives are transformed. We want to look just briefly at 2 Corinthians 4, verses 3 through 6. It says, But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is one of those passages where we're presented with both the problem and the solution. The problem is that the gospel is hidden to those who are blinded by unbelief. But the solution to the problem of the world is the proclamation of Christ Jesus our Lord. He brings light to sin-darkened eyes. He shines the knowledge of God into us. So while there is blindness in the world, we are going to face trials. We're going to face difficulties. So I want to talk a little bit about three areas. The first is persecution. I want to read you a report from Uganda. A 24-year-old Ugandan woman named Rema was traveling with her father, a Muslim sheik, on a business trip to the eastern part of their country this past March. Because of the travel restrictions of the COVID-19 virus, they were required to extend their stay in the Mbel district. On May 4th, 2020, Rema found a Christian radio program, and as a result of listening, she became a, a believer. She came to faith in Christ. However, her father was so angry about her conversion that he beat her, poured gasoline on her, and set her on fire. Rama's aunt inter intervened and took her to the hospital for treatment, but she is expected to be hospitalized for at least a month until her extensive wounds can heal. Please pray for Rama's recovery, that she would grow in her new faith in Christ, and that God would open her heart, father's heart to the gospel. I read this because right now we feel like we're oppressed, Right? And, and there's some things happening that we don't agree with, right? There's some of our freedoms that are being infringed upon. But we don't have anything like this. And we need to pray for those who are facing persecution in the world around us. I want to read uh, one of the comments online. It said, be the change that we need to see. Amen. The second thing we want to mention is openness. And this is um, one of the things that I, that I love. Uh, this past week uh, was when we would normally have been at the IFCA National Convention. And so this year, um, we weren't able to be there because of COVID-19, but they did do a virtual convention. And one of the things that was awesome is to hear from a brother in India who is there as a pastor, who has a Bible college that he uh, oversees, and him just sharing what the Lord is doing. They're, they're ministering to orphans. There's children that are abandoned on the street, and they bring them in. They teach them about Christ. They get them saved. They train them up, and they send them back out. And just incredible things that are happening. Uh, one of the prayers earlier mentioned countries that are sometimes considered closed. Right? And yet there are faithful men and women who are going into those countries and proclaiming Christ. And so we praise God for that. But there's a third thing I wanted to, to mention, and that is indifference. I think this is one of the most difficult things we're facing in our country. Um, many who claim to be Christians have no desire or ability to share the gospel. They have no desire or ability to be sanctified by Christ. They have no desire or ability to live for him. That's an issue, right? And we want that to not be true of us. 
What do we do about this? Well, we faithfully proclaim Jesus Christ. We live out the gospel in front of our neighbors and our friends. We preach Christ Jesus the Lord. And we trust him to give light to those in darkness. So we're going to uh, spend some time in prayer. And, uh, and then we're going to... Um, I'm going to give anyone who just has a prayer request that you want to share or a praise, we're going to have an opportunity to do that as well. Um, I'm, try, I'm looking at the live stream here, and it looks like it's having trouble, but I'm not sure if it's everywhere or just up here. So I'm, I will uh, give someone a chance to pray, and then I'll, I'll check on that. <laughs> Okay, do we have someone who would like to pray for the spiritual climate? Okay, Daryl's going to pray from the back. Heavenly Father, we just, our hearts are heavy in America and around the world with things that are going on, things that have already been discussed, the moral condition, the political climate, but as Pastor John said, the bottom line is the spiritual condition, the condition of the heart, and that's an individual thing. It's not something that we can dictate by rules and laws. As we've seen, you can, for example, put as many gun control laws as you want, but it doesn't govern the heart that pulls the trigger. And in terms of salvation, Lord, this world needs you. As we say, it's going to hell in a handbasket, and it's doing it quickly. It saddens our hearts. Sometimes it's demoralizing, discouraging, but Lord, we do pray for the salvation of the people of this planet. Mm. We pray that your spirit will pierce through all the things that keep them from opening their heart to you, whether it's in the news, whether it's opinions of friends, things that people say. I pray that you will cut through all that, Lord, and pierce to the core issue, to their heart. And may they see you, experience you, understand you in a way that they have never before. And may mm. their eyes be opened, spiritual eyes be opened. Yes. And Lord, we pray that you will glorify yourself as you do these things. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, does anyone have any prayer requests or praises or anything that they want to share? All right. Lord, there's no um, better way to pray than the words that you gave us in Revelation by John. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Mm. You are worthy, O oh Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by you will they exist who were created. Mm. Worthy is the Lamb who was yes. slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And Lord, this day, in this house, this is what we ask, that all of us will be, be willing to lift you up and glorify you through this time that we are going through, that we not fear anything, for you in full, you are in full control of our lives and this world and the world to come. And we praise you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Prayer requests or praises. If you have one and you don't want to say it into the mic, you can say it and I'll repeat it. Mm. 
Okay. Let's do that right now. Father, we just want to bring Judy before you. And Lord, with modern medicine, we are thankful for the things that they're able to do. And yet any time there is intervention into the body, there is pain of, with that as well. So Lord, we ask that these shots would do the job of relieving the issue. And yet, Lord, we ask for recovery from the pain of the shots themselves. And Lord, we ask that you would just surround her with your love and your care, that you would give grace uh, to Bill and Mary and give just an extra measure of peace to all of them in this time. And that, Lord, they would know the comfort and joy of your presence. Thank you, Father. You know, one of the things that I have been thinking of with this whole COVID-19 situation is that sometimes we're like, well, it's just, it's, it's just so horrible and, and so awful. And yet we forget that there are some good things that come from these types of situations. One of those is a lot of people are getting t to spend time with their family like they haven't for years right? Um, we just came off of a really pretty chaotic school year and, and different things like that. And right before the COVID stuff, we had had a basketball season. And we've been able to spend some time together as a family that we hadn't before. And that, was, that has been great. Um, there seems to be an awakening interest in the things of the gospel, right? We've had quite a few people even just um, around us uh, watching our live stream and different things like that, and we praise God for that. It got us uh, doing a live stream maybe sooner than we would have without it um, and, and things like that. Any other, anything that anyone wants to share? Joseph, hold on one second. Okay. Dear Jesus, help Andrew for us to figure out what he is allergic to and for the coronavirus to just go away. Mm -hmm. And did you say amen? Amen. Thank you, babe. Is it? Okay. Yeah. So, oh, stay here. Um, I'm just going to share a little bit. Um, I guess it would be a praise um, for just reminders of who God is. Um, this last week, um, in the women's session of the IFCA conference, one missionary, they're missionaries in China, and they came back on furlough in. October and have been here since. So God's provision has been amazing for them. And she was sharing um, an example that I think in pictures, and it was so good for me. But she said, sometimes I feel like I am in a snow globe and it gets shooken and life's going crazy around me. And that's how I have felt. And I'm sure some of you have felt during all of this. She's like, our life, whether maybe we're broken inside the snow globe and we're running around, swirling around with the snow as well. Um, and our life can feel so chaotic and crazy, but God's holding this snow globe and he is seeing what we're going through and he is in control and he is there to help us. Um, and it was just such a good reminder for me. Here's this woman who, she's not home. She's not where they have lived for two years, three years, something like that. Um, they're here living someplace that God provided for them. And um, here I am, and I get frustrated with different things, but I am so blessed, and I am so thankful for that reminder that God is in control, and he sees us even if we feel like we're swir swirling around with the snow in our snow globe. Thank you. One second. <laughs> Let me trade you. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for sharing. We have uh, on here a prayer for Barb to uh, a praise for that Barb survived her hospital dear, uh, ordeal. Praise for his continued support as she continues her recovery. Um, praise for answered prayers. Amen to that. We praise God for, for all of that. Good. Father, thank you for the privilege of prayer.
Thank you that you hear us when we pray. You answer our prayers that prayer is powerful. May we be men and women of prayer. May we be people of prayer, children of prayer. May all of us spend time with you. And I pray, Father, that you would be with the political climate of our world, that you would be with the moral climate of our world and the spiritual climate of our world. And we recognize and we understand that you are going to accomplish these things through the people of God. And so may we be faithful and committed servants of Christ. And may you use us for your honor and glory. May this week everything we do, everything we say, and everything we think bring praise and honor and glory to you and your name. We ask all of this in the precious name of your son Jesus. Amen. Thank you all so much for joining us. Please exit out this door. Have a fantastic week.